from the local station. This is Weather Authority Weekday. Good morning, everyone. I'm meteorologist Mark Collins. It's the middle of the week here on the Wednesday, and we're in the middle of this wet pattern. More thunderstorms coming our way here during the course of the day. In fact, we could have some heavier rains than yesterday. Still some slow movers in the forecast, and the heat is coming back with highs in the 90s. We've got a lot to talk about today. We're going to cover the weather and also go outside the solar system to talk about some space weather, all that coming up after the break. But first, let's show you how, well, it's cloudy. Yeah, it's cloudy out there. And you know how when we get the storms in the afternoon, it's usually billowing up from the heat over land, causes those thunderstorms to fire up. Well, the clouds that we're seeing are debris clouds from thunderstorms that fired up offshore. So it is a cloudy start, but that's holding down temperatures in the 80s. And there you can see out over the Gulf Stream, those thunderstorms that I was talking about. And what happens is the Gulf Stream is warm water, current river, it's basically a, a river in the ocean that flows northward. And that allows thunderstorms to flare up at night. When the ground loses its heat, there's usually some thunderstorms out there, and those upper level winds have brought back the clouds over us, making it look a little whitewashed out there. But I'll take it. You know, that sun is going to be powerful here today. It'll burn very quickly, and it will fire up the thunderstorms when the ground starts to heat up. Now, the opposite is happening with that southwesterly flow. There's a little bit of convection. Warmer Gulf waters cause those rain showers along the nature coast. They've been shifting inland, working towards the I-75 corridor. So when you see the rain out there in the Gulf in the morning, typically that comes back our way during the afternoon. And we're gonna see that today with a 50% chance of rain, even higher uh, for some areas along the Trail Ridge where your rain chances will jump to around 60 to 70%. So right now, uh, yes, it is the morning at 10 o'clock and we've got those temperatures in the lower 80s. We'll spend our hours in the 80s here up until about lunchtime. And then we'll start nosing towards that 90 degree mark and we'll spend several hours today right around 90 degrees. But those storms will be firing up early in the afternoon, say around one to two. So we're not gonna be dealing with the big mid, mid 90 degree heat like what we'll probably see later in the week and certainly for the weekend. But numerous storms will be around, some of those lasting into the evening and we should see a pretty decent coating from the coast back to the inland areas. But like I said, we're all is pretty tranquil right now. But let's see, as we start heating up, this is around one o'clock in the afternoon. You can see just pockets of isolated storms, but the coverage will quickly start to increase as we head towards three and four o'clock. So this will be prime time for seeing thunderstorms really lining up along the river and the coastal areas. It's that I-95 channel where the rain will start to flare up. And some of those could bring in some high gusty winds because we have a lot of instability in the atmosphere today. And since those storms aren't gonna move much, it could put down heavy rain totals of about three quarters of an inch to possibly an inch of rain. Once we wash out the atmosphere along the I-95 stretch, we'll see the heating over those inland areas bubble up some storms which will linger into the evening. So we're looking at you out towards uh, Columbia County, into Alachua County, even out towards Union County. Those are the zones from around uh, five to six that could have those storms firing up and lasting through at least seven, eight o'clock. So rinse, reset, repeat, that's the, the trend that we'll be in here over the next couple of days. I mentioned how storms could be strong. See all those red colors? That's what we call convective available potential energy, the CAPE. And that is an, a, a marked hallmark of stronger storms when you see those reds. But as we head in the evening, notice how those reds are vanished and uh, we'll be back into the reset pattern. So taking you beyond Wednesday into Thursday, this is a forecast model that shows more of the same. Basically, we're in that southwesterly steering flow. It might actually be a little lighter on Thursday, so the flood potential increases, but it will be offset by an overall decrease in the coverage of rain. So there'll be fewer storms Thursday into Friday, but the ones that do uh, develop could bring in some heavier rain. Obviously, you need to watch the lightning. It's part of the fabric of being a Floridian. Uh, the, here you can see one o'clock, uh, we're all ducking, running cover. If you're uh, out along a, a boat or out along the parks, watch out for that lightning. It could be deadly here through the late afternoon. Big flare up there over inland areas and it all pushes off to the west. And we'll see the thunderstorms adding up to probably a quarter, or three tenths of an inch of rain. But like I said, 
when you get some of those heavier downpours, here's a model showing upwards of near three quarters of an inch of rain in Gainesville. So that could be a lot if you are trapped by some of those slow movers. Uh, yesterday I was talking about how the tropics continue to sleep and nothing has changed here that would otherwise indicate new waves moving out into the Atlantic. There's no stalled fronts in the Gulf or the Caribbean that would spur up any type of a tropical cyclonic motion. And we're deal dealing with just a small little wind surge at night. Now, I think this is overdone. The moderate rip currents yesterday was pretty flat as can be. There was not even any surf to ride. So without the waves, I don't know how you get a moderate rip current risk out there. But I guess, uh, you know, water can always be deadly. You can drown in two inches of water. So that's why there's a yellow, even though many of the flags were flying green yesterday. All right, taking you through the next couple of days, you see the heat. It starts to come back. Mid-90s with all this humidity, it's going to put the feels like temperature up around 105 degrees. So my suggestion, if you have to mow the yard like I do, Mornings are best, especially Wednesday and Thursday, because this weekend, eh, no one wants to mow. Not when you got the weekend and a, a cold brew in the hand. Sit back, relax, enjoy your time off, and escape those mid-90 degree readings. Coming up, we're going to escape out of this solar system, talking about some space weather and, uh, yeah, how solar flares uh, impact um, tidally locked planets. What did I just say? Do you even know what a tidally locked planet is? I'll explain it all coming up after this. Hey everyone, we're back and we are talking space weather. Did you even know that there was space weather? Uh, chances are people that run satellites, they know about it because uh, space weather can impact satellite communications, astronauts on spacewalks. They can be radiated by what's called a coronal mass injection, a CMJ. Coronal mass injections are simply when the sun discharges plasma energy. It looks like that. This was uh, an image taken from the Heliospheric Project uh, in Boulder, Colorado. They have a space weather center there that NOAA runs. I've actually visited that, that place, it's pretty cool. But these coronal mass injections actually impact uh, the climate of exoplanets. Now, what are exoplanets? Well, they're usually planets that are outside our solar system. They tend to um, revolve around a star, and the exoplanets that are very close to the star are what's called tidally locked. That means, well, our moon is actually tidally locked. That's a good example. Let's talk about the moon, because one side of the moon always faces the sun. It's because it basically revolves around its axis at the same period at which it revolves around the sun. So there is a dark side and there is the lit side. Beyond our solar system, these exoplanets, there's one called Trappist-D, uh, when these coronal mass ejections hit those uh, types of planets, it creates weather on the planet that the, uh, the Florida International University has studied and it causes winds on the dark side to reach 86 miles an hour. So it's kind of cool how there can be weather out in space impacting these planets, but it's not just the high winds on the dark side, but the temperature changes on the Earth. And now you're seeing where I'm going. Oh, is these space weather impacts, does that create climate change on planets? Well, it does in the short term. Over the long term, the study hasn't shown anything, and so, you can draw connections to this planet. Do these solar flares impact our climate? Well, over the short term, we don't know. Over the long term, it's definitely not. It's the greenhouse gases that are creating the warming here on Earth. But on those exoplanets, these short-term coronal mass ejections does create a short-term warming due to those uh, global uh, greenhouse, glasses, greenhouse gases in the surface. So they've found that in these extraterrestrial planets, the warming happens down at the surface and above high in the atmosphere, it actually cools because of the gases in the high part of the atmosphere actually reflect a lot of that energy and causes a net cooling. So the upshot of this is by studying planets that are so far away that they're not even in our solar system, we can gain an understanding of how that might impact other planets climates now because the earth is not tidally locked it revolves around and we have a sunrise and we have a sunset whereas some parts of the moon doesn't uh, those uh, things probably don't apply to us but the takeaway is there is space weather out there and we have a lot to learn 
beyond our solar system. All right, I'm meteorologist Mark Collins. Over and out, we'll see you again, same time, same place tomorrow. See why every day more people are choosing News 4 Jax, Northeast Florida and South Georgia's number one source for local news.